thermodynamometry has an additional very interesting capacity beyond the obvious ability to measure the rate of flow into the central retinal artery and thus the perfusion of the uh, posterior pole of the eye. When you look at that measurement, the derivation of it comes from the fact that you're looking at the differentiation between the brachial artery blood pressure and the central retinal artery blood pressure. When that ratio is below 60%, it implies that the patient has a risk for central vascular disease in addition to the impact that that may be having on the eye itself. Uh, issues related to glaucoma and other vascular concerns can be identified and typically would invoke a higher order of evaluation in the form of transcranial Doppler, let's say, which would allow us to analyze the entire vascular system and determine whether the patient has pre-existent concerns that should be addressed in other disciplines in medicine besides the eye care practitioner. Ocular perfusion pressure is one of the essential elements in understanding how the relationship between the vascular supply and the intraocular pressure create the disease state. There's been enormous efforts at the laboratory level, at the research level, to create instrumentation that can analyze it, but it's never been available to the general primary eye care physician. And for that reason, the FMAT1 has revolutionized the measurement of that particular aspect of the ophthalmic physiology. By looking at the central retinal artery supply and comparing it to the intraocular pressure, we develop the OPP. If the OPP is below 45, the patient is demonstrating a notable decline in perfusion pressure. There are numerous reasons for this, but certainly in the idea of glaucoma, it can be the sine qua non um, in disease states such as normal pressure glaucoma. And even in the open angle glaucoma space, the inability of the eye to perfuse properly, which has been looked at in almost every study that we've ever done on a major level, the AGES study, the SIGIT study, uh, the EMGT, they've all looked at perfusion values by using the subjugate of the diastolic blood pressure. This gives you a much more accurate and centrally positioned analysis, and I think is essential in the management of certainly key patients like normal pressure, but in progressive patients with open angle disease, I think this provides a valuable tool in understanding why the current therapy may or may not be as successful as you would want it to be. Thank you.